Redditors who rage quit a job without thinking. What was the last straw? I worked as a painter for a franchisee of a student painting company and he kept telling me that he would pay me next week. This went on for about 6 weeks and the final straw was when I had finished several large projects that would give him ample money to pay me but he decided to hire on another person instead of paying me for all the work I had already done. Like $1300 worth of work. Then he tried negotiating down what he thought he should be paying me despite already having agreed in writing what I would be getting paid right from the get go. I was so mad that I didn't give him notice or even show up for the next day of work because I had bills to pay and needed to make as much money as possible during the summer. I wrote him off as a lost cause and took him to small claims court for what he owed me and eventually got my money through the court. Still was a pain in the butt though and as far as I know he's still working there full time. I hope you know this now, but there are very few legal reasons for withholding pay. He should have also been paying fines to you for the late payment of wages. After working 37 years, I requested a leave from work to care for my partner who was dying of cancer. I had 8 weeks of PTO time and was denied the request, so I quit to care for him in his last month of life. I was working at a call center. My shift started at 10, I badged into the building at about 9.55 and logged on. But the decrepit PC I was using took so long to boot up that when I finally logged in, I was 15 seconds late. I told my supervisor and he said there's nothing he can do. Since I was late I was put on probation and wouldn't be eligible for a raise for another month. And that I should arrive 15 minutes early so that situation won't happen again. I handed him my headset. Walked out and have never worked in a call center since. My Frickwits manager tried this. My response was to the effect that if 15 minutes early was recorded, then I'll either be paid the 15 minute, or I'll leave 15 minutes early. You can't do that. If I'm expected to start 9 on the dot I'll leave at 5 on the dot. If I don't get paid I don't work. Simple. I need a summer job while in high school so I applied at a local grocery store to bag stock clean. My first day there, there was some sort of confusion as to what I was supposed to do or to whom I was to report. I was sent to the front counter where the customer service manager gave me a till and told me to open a register. Mind you I'd had zero training on a register, I didn't even know how to put the till in it for frick's sake. I told the lady this and was told to go do my job. Within about 2 minutes at the register there was a line several deep, and I'm just standing there with the till in my hands. The customer service lady comes storming over asking why I had such a line and I tried again to explain to her that I was supposed to be a stalker or whatever and that I knew nothing about operating a register. She called me stupid in front of the customers so I handed her the till and told her to go frick herself. Walk down the street in my uniform and got a job at another grocery store. Went through several interviews and started a new gig. I'd be providing call center support for Windows maybe some Apple support. Nothing I couldn't handle. I am. After all. IT support. Heck. I even cleaned the mouse while trying to take the technical test. I get a start date and am told it'd be 2 weeks of training. No big deal. I can do 2 weeks of training. I show up on day 1 of training. And. It supports for Whirlpool washing machines and dryers. Hold the freaking phone. What? That's right. Classic bait and switch. I got up, walked over to my hiring manager and said, I quit. You hired me for Windows support, not washing machines and dryers, and walked out. Two weeks later I get a call. Hey, this is your manager. I'm calling to find out why you haven't come to work in two weeks. I guess you didn't get that memo. I quit on day one because your company lied to me. Got an $80 paycheck. About 7 years later I got a letter in the mail that a class action lawsuit had been filed against the company for labor law violations. 2 months after that, I got an 8 cent check in the mail. I giggled. I'm surprised that you even got a paycheck. After helping an elder getting the best option for him and not the most expensive I get called to the office. Boss, do you feel bad deceiving costumers? Me. Yeah of course. Boss, the you're in the wrong place. Frick you and your miserable life be. I actually did this like 2 months ago for the first time. I'm a bartender and I was working in some crappy Mexican restaurants downtown. 
the tips were crap because the food was crap so we were barely ever busy. So already I'm living in NYC making barely 400 a week when I'm used to making more than double. At this point I've been there 2 months and I hate it more and more every day. Around this time my mother gets really bad pneumonia and due to complications it degraded her heart. So she has to have open heart surgery to repair a valve. It's a risky procedure and my mother is touching 65. Now, let me state that staff turnover was incredibly high because in addition to us making horrible money the manager was a complete and utter moron. Most staff left after a month. So when my mom gives me a date for her surgery I go to my manager and give her a basic breakdown of the situation and tell her I need 4 days off from X to Y so I can be with my family. She says no problem, but just to play it safe I send emails and texts to her confirming that I indeed do have these days off. She agrees. I think cool no problem. Well I was dead freaking wrong. 3 days before the surgery the schedule for the week comes out and I'm scheduled through the entire week. I immediately go to my manager and ask what the frick is up because I'm not wasting away behind this moldy, rat infested bar in the west village while my mom has surgery. No balls this woman has the nerve to say I didn't request off at all. When I show her my paper trail stating that yes, I goddamn did put in a request she says what difference does it make if you're there the surgery is going to have an outcome whether you're there or not, and starts to rattle off how I need to be a team player and I'm freaking up a crap by requesting off and yada yeah. Her voice fades off and I literally see red. I say nothing and go back to work. This is at 5pm. Happy hour and hour rush starts at 8. I'm the only bartender on today. Fast forward to 8.30. My bar is slammed. I have a bunch of drink tickets from the servers and it's a mess. Total shichow. My manager comes behind the bar and instead of offering any assistance she tells me to not bring home drama to work I stare at her in disbelief for a moment. Truly stunned that such a tone deaf moron could possibly be in charge of anything. I laughed in her stupid face and walked right out the door and went to go see my mom. TL. DR. Manager says making margaritas is more important than my dying mom. Peas. Mom made a full recovery. Glad your mom is is doing good. That stupid woman must be living in a box on the street by now on how she runs a business. I was 21 working at UPS. Was a truck loader the first year. Became the fastest loader in the warehouse just because I like working quickly. Only wanted to become a supervisor because my manager was really easy to work with and always wanted to help with solutions to problems. Once they promoted me to supervisor they transferred my manager to a different warehouse and didn't say why. Worked as a supervisor for a year and once peak season arrived. Mid November early January. Things were getting crazy and my manager was just a yes man to his boss. Never helped solve issues. Just said figure it out or just get it done. Well in November my best friend and I had won a world series of beer pong satellite tourney to get a free entry and stay at the Flamingo in Vegas for the tournament worth $600. Tournament was from the 1st of January 5th. Well during peak season it's nearly impossible to get time off and I looked at this tournament as a once in a lifetime opportunity with my best friend. Things were just getting so crazy and they weren't approving any vacation requests. I wasn't getting assistance from my boss with the workload so I just said frick it I'm out. I come to find out my manager, his boss and 4 other managers got fired for changing time cards to make their productions numbers look better. Which I found out is why they shipped my cool manager away cause he wouldn't participate in the dirty deeds. My best friend and I placed 46th out of 500 teams. It was one of the best memories I have to this day. No regrets. I used to work as a housekeeper at a really shady hotel. Wasn't the best job in the world, but the pay actually wasn't that bad. The owner and his wife were horrible to everyone, especially the housekeepers. I eventually worked my way to being the head housekeeper, but they kept referring to me as a maid. I don't know why that bothered me so much, but it did. Anyway, the rodeo was in town and we were really busy. I had every single room to clean, and none of my other housekeepers were showing up for work. So I asked my boss where they were and he said he gave them the day off. They're young and have stuff to do. They were all high schoolers and I was 19 at the time. It was summer, so he decided he wanted them to go out and have fun and leave the 65 rooms to me. I was already mad like that, but then it got worse. I get to about my 15th room, I'm exhausted, and I just want to get one more done so I can't take a break. I knock on the door, 
No answer. So I'll let myself in only to see a man standing naked in the doorway. I apologize and try to leave when he calls me back. He said he wanted me to clean the room. I told him I couldn't while he was still there and certainly not while he was naked. He said I had to do it. He was a guest. I go to my boss and explain why I wasn't cleaning that room. He told me I had to do what the customer said. If he wanted to be naked and in the room while I cleaned, then that's what had to happen. I threw my cleaning rag at him, told him to frick off and left the rest of the rooms to him. I worked as a stock boy in the back of Hollister, clothing retail for those unaware. Never really had interaction with customers but was still forced to buy their clothes to wear to work. They had all these rules about hairstyles, fingernails, and facial hair. One night I came in to start the shift at 2.30am to do a floor change. So middle of the night and the shift would end around the time the store opened up. I had the slightest bit of stubble on my face. Like a day and a half's worth of stubble. My manager, at 4am, told me she had a problem with my facial hair and that when the mall opened up I better go buy a razor and shave before anyone saw me like that is she would have to send me home for the night. I basically said well lucky for me. I was planning on quitting anyways. Good luck with the floor change and walked out. Went and got a biscuit breakfast. Went home. And got in bed. Boss not doing payroll before leaving on a business trip and leaving it to the poor office manager to tell people they weren't gonna get paid on time. I walked out of the staff meeting saying I'd be back when paychecks arrived. By the time I got home I was mad enough to call my ops manager back and quit. Why didn't the boss do payroll? Stated answer was printer toner cartridge at home was empty. Guess he'd never heard of writing checks with a pen. My printer ink is low so y'all don't g paid. K bye. WTF. What a crap thing to do to people. Earlier in my career in residential HVAC I thought it'd be a good idea to branch out a little. To add some tools to my tool bag, so to speak. So I took a position as a lead installer at a smaller company. It wasn't particularly bad. It just wasn't in my wheelhouse and I grew to dislike installing and tried to shift back over to the service department. My manager knew I wanted to transfer, but wouldn't let me despite my prior experience and instead hired another tech. Now, part of the reason I didn't want to do install anymore was because of the salesman. They were idiots. The concept of a tape measure was completely lost on them. And there were times they'd overpromise at the expense of me and my assistant. One day in particular the residential salesman had us install the wrong type of evaporator coil. Makes the cold happen. In an attic without taking any measurements beforehand. It didn't fit between the joists and when I asked for someone to come help I was told to use your imagination. We managed to get it done. Sort of. But at 5.30 it literally fell apart. I was apoplectic. Called the salesman and unloaded on him. We hacked it together just enough, and we left. The next morning at the shop the salesman tried talking to me, and I quit on the spot. He said that we had a meeting with a Lennox rep and to reconsider, please just think about it. He must have thought I agreed because when I went to turn in my timesheet in the meeting room he began to introduce me as the lead installer and service tech when it's slow. So I look at him and reply PSH. I frickin was and walked out. I was about to start at a new company, we had met previously and agreed a starting date etc. Turn up for my first day only to be greeted by why the frick are you fricking here? Turns out the boss thought I was starting a week later, just turned around and left, knew it wasn't going to be worth working there. My first job in aircraft maintenance was for a grumpy old dirt bag. I was a completely green apprentice fresh out of school, and the old bastard had no understanding of what his obligations were when taking on an apprentice and expected me to just already know everything. He'd send me to do jobs unsupervised, wouldn't provide any instruction or guidance, then get upset if I messed something up. He'd chew me out for taking too long to do stuff. He'd occasionally call me into his office and quiz me on random crap. Then belittle me for not having all the answers. Telling me he was going to phone up his buddies at the college and tell them how disappointed he was with the quality of their graduates. Guy was a total hypocrite too. Didn't have current manuals for any of the aircraft. Didn't properly track parts and hardware. He literally had a room full of random spare parts with no history. And took all sorts of shortcuts. One time during a windscreen replacement. Rather than measuring out the hardener for a sealant. 
He eyeballed it. The crap was supposed to set up in a couple hours, but it hadn't hardened after 3 days so he made me paint over it. We were supposed to cut open and inspect every oil filter we replaced, looking for metal that could indicate a failing engine. He'd store all the old oil filters on a giant workbench without labeling them. Then after a year or two go inspect them all at once. If any had metal, there was no way of knowing which aircraft it came from. He got away with being crappy because the Transport Canada inspector responsible for audits in that area was a friend of his, and he'd boast about how audits consisted of them bullshitting over donuts in the break room for three days. Anyway, it was the last day of my probation and he called me into his office to tell me he had a very difficult decision about whether to keep me on. I told him I'd make it easy for him and quit on the spot. As a former aircraft maintenance mechanic this literally made me wince. I honestly didn't think in this day and age with the amount of regulation and monitoring places like that can still exist. I hope that C gets what he deserves because he will kill people. I worked on a farm throughout high school for a very wealthy couple. The husband was a successful commercial real estate agent, and the wife trained dogs to do hunt and field tests. I primarily worked for the wife assisting in training the dogs. But as it was a farm, I did various things for the husband as well. The husband was a raging alcoholic who would get pee if you wouldn't share a drink with him when offered. When his wife was out of town participating in competitions with the dogs, I would have to drive over to the farm multiple times a day to feed the horses, clean out their stalls, etc etc and I would often run into him. But I tried to avoid it when possible because he made me uncomfortable. Anyway I was like 17 and it was summer. So I accidentally slept through my 6am alarms one morning and didn't get to the farm until around 8 to feed the horses and clean out their stalls. Not like it mattered. Horses can't tell time. The husband was there and had already been drinking as I could smell it on him. And he started laying into me about being so late. He told me I was a poor white trash piece of crap and if my parents let me oversleep for my job then they're even worse white trash pieces of crap and I won't ever amount to anything just like them. Yada yada. I told him he could take care of the horse crap himself and that I quit. And as I was leaving he was yelling at the top of his lungs that he would find me and kill me. I never went back. When I was in between jobs I applied to work a construction job that needed harness trained people. I was just coming off working as a solar installer so I figured I'd give it a shot. First day on the job they take me up to the top of their scaffolding section to clamp down beams. No biggie. I ask where their walkboards or scaffolding walks are for this floor because all the other floors have walkways whereas this one is just 1 inch beam. 3 foot gap. 1 inch beam all the way across. 100 plus feet in the air. They tell me they don't have any. Okay. I'll deal. After a few hours of grilling work I depleted my gallon jug of water and was getting dizzy. I called down to the elevator operator to bring me down. Without missing a beat he shouts climb and walks off to smoke a cigarette. I climbed down all 14 or so stories on angled beams with no harness while bordering on heat exhaustion. Walked up to the foreman. Told him he was going to kill someone and it wasn't going to be me. And left. Anyone talking about reporting them to OSHA? I got the job via a friend of a friend and I couldn't even tell you the name of the place now. This was about 6 years ago. At the time I just wanted to be rid of them. But yes I absolutely should have notified OSHA. I worked at Best Buy in the mid zeros. I started as a cashier and eventually made my way to the customer service booth. Which was something you had to earn. One day, it was a bit busier than usual and I was in the booth with another girl who was a notorious lazy crap. The boss asked her to jump on a register to clear out a line and she said no. So, the boss asked me and I said no also because I was already given another task. The next day, the pulled me into the office and told me I was demoted because of it. I walked right to my locker, grabbed my stuff, and left. Turns out the girl was banging the boss and that's why she was allowed to say no, but I couldn't. I started work in a bar in town and was told to be at work at 7pm for my first shift with the manager providing me with a typed timesheet showing my new working hours. Went home and had a cat nap. At 5pm my new manager calls me asking where the heck I am and telling me I need to come in now. I referred him to my timesheet which stated I was to be in at 7pm. To which he told me the timesheet doesn't define matter, you do what I tell you. Hearing this I politely told him that I would not be in tonight or ever. Good night and went back to my catnap. 
Worked at Best Buy in high school. Some people from a different store transferred over and one of them took over scheduling from my supervisor. But she gave me a total of 10 hours a week down from my usual 30-40. I had to save 2 checks just to pay my crappy cheap cricket phone bill with those hours. I complained to my sup about her scheduling and they raised me to about 15 hours. I couldn't understand why or what I had done to get cut so much. When my birthday came close I reminded her constantly to not schedule me that day which shouldn't have been a problem considering my crap hours. She told me constantly not to worry. Schedule comes out and that's the one day I am scheduled a full 8 hours. I try to contact her and they tell me she's on vacation and I can't change my schedule. I called to quit that same day. Then later I find out that the manager who I called when I quit had been snuggling money from the store at the moment I called her and was leaving the city. She never told anyone I called to quit. The manager who I called when I quit had been snuggling money from the store. Awesome mental image of her hugging stacks of bills and making lovey dovey noises. It was a Wednesday. I got a call from my mom when I was at work to tell me that my dad took a turn for the worse and maybe had a day or two left to live. I immediately went to the company owner, small business, and told her the situation and I really needed to leave right away since he lived a few hundred miles away. She told me she understood but, since I was working on some important projects, I should just come in on Saturday since he should be dead by then. I said okay, turned around, walked to my desk, Deleted all my personal files from the computer, left my badge and keys on my keyboard, and walked out. Dad passed on Friday, and I turned off my phone that night until the following Wednesday or Thursday while I spent time with my family. I already hated the job and the owner for other reasons and found a new job a few weeks later. So I can't say I regret anything. This happened a few years ago. My father had dementia for a decade before this so we were all prepared for it. Not that it made it easier. But the wounds have healed and I find I'm able to remember the good times with him more now than I did when he was so sick. I'm doing excellent nowadays, but really appreciate how much concern some people have for a total stranger's well-being. I should just come in on Saturday since he should be dead by then. What. The. Frick. IT manager here was working for a company that didn't consider us a real department. Lots of things leading up to this. But the last straw was an announcement that a satellite office was being shut down, and any employees that could would relocate to our office. We, the IT department, found out about this at the same time as the rest of the company, months after the decision had been made. Nobody told us anything, and this would involve obscene amounts of extra travel, hours, and stress as we accommodate the moves, the infrastructure, and everything else involved with such a move. I left in the middle of the announcement follow up my boss cfo threatens me to fire me if i don't do the work lol can't fire someone who's already quit taps temple then the ceo calls me and asks me back to negotiate i agree to come back for six months if i get a 25 percent raise for myself and my entire team after six months i left and they laid off everyone else respect for not looking out for only yourself if you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.